Okay, hello, this is Garrett Monroe from Hiram College Tech and Trek. Today we're talking about publishing an iBook or an eBook right from your iPad Pro. So what we wanna use is Pages. Pages is this lovely Apple suite tool. I've become a convert for, app, for Pages away from Word. Uh, I find it simpler, I find it easier to use, I find it really quickly and not distracting. And of course, it works better on the iPad than the Word app does. Um, so if I open up my pages, I can click on the, the create new document here. It immediately brings me into this template format. So I can click on these different types of templates and it can get me started on whatever it is I want to work on. So the book section, you might find new. They've updated some new templates in here. So a lot of people have said you can only produce an iBook or an eBook while using a full Mac, a desktop or a laptop style computer. You can actually produce one right here in Pages. And so here's some different styles to use. I like to use the landscape style because it looks great on the iPad Pro. Um, and there's different styles of templates. You can also create your own. I'm just gonna start here right with the textbook style template as a, as a way of getting started. So over here on the left side panel, you can uh, see the different pages they've put in as your boilerplate for your book. But in the bottom left, you can also see this plus button, which will open up more templates for you to use um, to get started and create your, create your little book. So uh, in terms of teaching and learning, there's really two, there's, there's at least two, two ways of thinking about these book projects. One of which is you, as an instructor, creating content that students might use in a flipped sense. So you're creating little modules, lessons, or course packs that students are reading when they're not with you in class, you're sort of flipping the content. And this creates new affordances when you're together with the students in class. You can now do conferencing, you can do workshops, you can do kind of group work, give in-person feedback, the kind of stuff you can't do when you're just doing instructional stuff face-to-face. -face. So it frees up new, new affordances for learning by creating flipped uh, resources that way. The other side of the coin are leading students to create these rich media projects. So students are producing the ebooks or the iBooks. And so there's something really motivating for students, I think, about um, moving beyond producing a Word document or an essay, but taking that and then having them produce something that's publicly usable. So I want to show you how you could just publish this baby right on Amazon or right into iBooks, the Apple iBooks store. We can do that with just a few clicks. First, a few productivity or a few sort of navigation tips. So if I want to replace this photo here with my own content, I click on this plus button, and that's going to allow me to bring up my camera reel and choose a photo. Let's see if I can find my Tech and Trek logo. Okay, well, there's a screenshot of my iPad, pretty close. Um, and over here, I can come in and, and begin editing um, the title. Okay, design thinking in higher ed, very nice. Doesn't quite fit in all that well. We'll get rid of the Latin, and we can adjust things. Um, down here, of course, you can start quickly editing out this content by doing things like voice dictation, importing other documents and pasting them in here and utilizing the sort of nice templates that have been outlined. It's pretty easy to create your own templates by dropping in shapes and putting them in the background and kind of following their format. You can of course adjust the style by clicking on the paintbrush and selecting um, text, color, style, all those sorts of uh, things you might expect. So the technical features of, of, of sort of publishing aren't what we're covering here. What I wanna show you is up here in the upper right, um, how with the plus button, we can use things like record audio, insert rich media, like photos or camera, or even do drawings with your Apple Pencil. So here I can, I can select drawing, or I can just bring my pencil down to the screen and it'll open up this toolbar. This gives me a toolbox of options for drawing with the pencil. It also gives me the smart annotation or drawing feature. Today I'm just talking about drawing. What I wanna show you is how you can, um, so what you do is you select your tool and then you select your color and you can come in here and do your, do your scribbles. 
There's some other cool um, ways of using drawing. You can animate them to show uh, processes live. You can also trace over images, which, which works really well. So I don't want to click Insert Image Gallery. I'm going to click the Backspace button on that. Click Photo or Video. I'm actually going to click Camera. And what I'm going to do is actually take a picture and um, use that photo. Here I am. And what I want to do is bring my pencil down, click Drawing, and now I can begin to um, create a copy of any kind of image I could insert either from my camera or from um, anywhere on the internet. And just by selecting this Draw tool, this Fill tool, it allows me to create an outline of my head. So now what I want to do, I'm going to click Done, I'm going to click on the image, then I want to go to Arrange. So I'm going to click on the Style button, Arrange. And I want to move this to the back. So you see when I move it to the back now, um, it, uh, it goes to the back. The photo is now in the back. The other thing I can do is I can put the opacity up on this thing. So if I click on Style, I can bring the opacity down a bit so I can still see it. And I can bring my pencil back down open this baby up and continue my wonderful work of art. And um, the other, so if I click done, and then I bring this thing forward just a little bit, I can still see my face there, and now I can um, start doing other things with the drawing, like doing my, my, uh, my beard here and whatever sort of color you think that is. There's a beard. We could get the uh, get the glasses going here. And um, eyebrows as well. not do that. Click done. Do what I want to do once I'm all done. Select that image and click delete. And we're left with a little funky sketch. So it's just a way of sort of, <laughs> with a bit of a lumpy head, of taking any kind of image and, and creating artwork from it um, to create authentic and, and copyright free images. Anyway, um, obviously a lot of options here with uh, publishing, with media and pages, how to actually get down to it and export um, to uh, the iBook store to Amazon. So two things we can do. We can click on export. Export's going to give me four options. What I'm talking about is EPUB. So if you export as an EPUB, this is what's called an ebook. This is what your Kindle can read or a Nook or any kind of ebook reader. You could also push this and sell it on the Amazon store or any other kind of open um, ebook site. So that's useful, but it can't handle all the extra media. Um, the Publish to I Apple Books is an option that allows you to get right on the iTunes store within a couple taps. You're going to need to make sure your iCloud is open. You have extra space in there, mine's full, but if it was, it would open up a box, you'd fill out some settings and you'd just click publish and you'd be on the iTunes store and you could send that link to your students and have them pull it, pull it down very easily. So that's a handy way of getting right to Apple and publishing your content. Okay, so that's it for today. As always, shoot me an email, um, stop by, and I'd love to work with you on a project. Thank you.